Reading a research paper can often be intimidating and frustrating experience. And yes, part of it is because some papers just have very complicated material that's tough to understand if you don't have enough experience in the field. But most of the time, it's because people just approach reading the paper in their own way to begin with. Today, I'd like to tell you how I personally read and highlight papers, so hopefully some of it will be helpful. Ooh, and before we start, just a little disclaimer. I am by no means an expert and final authority on this field. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel trying to figure this stuff out on my own and sharing my experience along the way. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you're ready, buckle up. My name's Atom. I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. Here we explore mental and digital tools to help us study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. So today I'd like to talk about research papers. The best way to get most sophisticated and most recent information on any field, but which sometimes could be tricky to read. The thing is, you shouldn't try to read the research paper in the same way you would read a popular book or a blog post. It's not suited for that. This was my biggest mistake when I started a few years back. I had the impression that I should read the paper in the same order as it is laid out, and that only if I read every character in it, squeezing 100% of the words into my brain, I would understand the content. But nothing could be further from the truth. Before we dive straight into the algorithm, I'd like to make some general remarks to keep in mind before and during reading the paper, or any text for that matter. When you sit down to read something, it's great to have a clear goal in mind. Answer the question. Wait a minute, why am I reading this? It could be because you are seeking to find an answer to a particular question, or you just want to familiarize yourself with the content of this particular paper. Depending on your goal, you'll pay attention to different things in the text. Let's see an example. This is Bill. He's a second year undergraduate who recently joined a lab at his local university to get his first research experience. And the professor says, we have journal clubs each Friday, and tomorrow we'll be discussing this paper right here, so maybe take a look at it beforehand. All Bill has to do is to read the introduction, significance, discussion, maybe take a look at the figures just to get the gist of what was the approach. It's not necessary for him to dive into the methods and the math behind the result just yet. Claire, on the other hand, is a fourth year student in the middle of writing her bachelor's thesis. She's trying to understand the exact neural mechanism that's responsible for theta rhythm generation. She came across this paper in an attempt to find the answer, so she would read it much more carefully than Bill, diving deeper into the model structure and the discussion, scanning each section thoroughly. But the math and exact numerical parameters are not really that important for her. And here is Richard, a PhD student, trying to incorporate a model for theta rhythm generation into his own simulation. Richard stumbled upon this very same paper while choosing a proper differential equation system and parameter values for modeling his parameter neurons. So he'll be paying close attention to the model description and parameters while skipping various discussions about significance and historical perspective. Notice it's the same paper, but because all three people have different goals, the reading process will drastically differ for all three of them. So whether you stumble into the paper on your own, discover it through something like a research rabbit. Very amazing tool, by the way, I have a video about it right here. Find it in references somewhere, or your friend or professor just straight up sends it to you. You want to make sure whether it's actually something that you want to read. We live in an era of information abundance. Knowledge resources, including scientific papers, appear at a much faster pace than we actually can consume them. So you should be very picky what to invest your time and cognitive effort into. And papers are quite tricky. Often titles can be misleading, abstracts can be misleading, everything might seem completely fine, but in the middle of reading the paper, you're like, wait, what the fuck are they doing? No, that's not what I thought it was about. Shit. That's why it's helpful to always have your inner filter slash shield on. If at any point the paper loses relevance to you personally, you start to get bored and stop resonating with it. Just close it and go read something else. Don't be afraid to ditch the reading in the middle if you lose the interest. So in what order should you read the research paper? And by order I mean its parts. As you probably know, 
every paper follows more or less a similar structure. First of all, there's abstract. It's a very brief, information-dense summary. Entire paper condensed into one paragraph. Now, ideally, abstracts are meant for you to figure out the main gist of the paper. But often they seem very confusing and start to make sense only when you familiarize yourself with the main content. So don't be discouraged when you read abstract once, twice, and it still looks like an alien jibber jabber. It, it doesn't mean you're too stupid to read that particular paper. Just keep going with the steps and return to the abstract a bit later. Probably it'll become clear. After the abstract, things are pretty self-explanatory. We got introduction, which contains background information about the paper's content that the authors think should be refreshed in the reader's mind. The main part is usually comprised of sections, from just one to quite a few. Each section contains a description of an experiment, detailed explanation of the methods used and the results. Many sections also have figures and tables. Next, there is discussion slash summary slash conclusion section. Names may vary, but the idea is the same. This is where the authors summarize what they have done and the results they've discovered. They discuss how to interpret the findings, what's the significance, and open questions for the future. Finally, we have references. Don't underestimate these bad boys. They will become essential when you want to find out more about something that was briefly touched upon in the text, and to find relevant readings. Once you have your inner filter set up and a clear goal in mind, it's time to get our hands dirty. First of all, read the abstract and then skim discussion and conclusions to make sure whether it's something that you really want. If you are indeed intrigued by the results and you think that this paper is what you've been looking for, then go ahead and read the introduction and the discussion. If there is something you don't understand in the introduction, don't hesitate to pause reading the paper and Google it, or even watch a couple of YouTube explainers if the topic is too complex. And remember, all of this time, you have your mental filter switched on. When you read the conclusion first in this way, try to think about how you would personally go about reaching that conclusion on your own, trying to foresee the big picture of the author's approach. Then you go ahead and start skimming the main part. On the first pass, you just look at the titles of the sections, to get a feel for what's going on and to try to create a very rough structure of the paper in your head. If a section has some great attention-looking figures, take a quick look at them as well. Okay, first they test this hypothesis, then describe the model and just... Uh -huh. Okay, and here's the comparison with experimental evidence. See, you're not diving into each section. In fact, you're not reading anything other than the titles. It's a very helpful step to help you orientate around the paper later on. After this, you should have an approximate structure of the paper laid out in your head. You've read the introduction, you know the results, and you know a very rough sequence of steps how to get from here to here. Now you can start reading those sections that are of interest more thoroughly, paying more attention to figures and their captions. But even during that second pass, pay closer attention to the results and those semi-introductions in the beginning of each section motivating the experiment. And don't concern yourself too much with the methods. Materials and methods is the part of the paper that usually gets read last, if read at all. It could be quite complex, so go down that rabbit hole only if you are super interested in how a particular thing could be done or if it's relevant to your own personal research. In parallel with reading, I like to highlight important points. But be careful not to fall into the illusion that if you highlight something, it magically gets transferred into your brain. No. But highlighting is a great tool for further processing of the paper. For example, if later on I decide to make a mind map to jot down some notes on it, include it as part of my presentation, or just refresh it into my memory days or weeks later, if it's properly highlighted, it makes all of this so much easier. Now, what do I mean by that? I've settled to use five highlighting colors across all of the papers I read, and each of them has its own specific meaning. Blue is for background information, some prerequisite facts that I found important for proper reading. Blue color is also applicable for historical perspective, if I think it's important, and the non-obvious acronyms that are used throughout the paper. Green is for assumptions the paper is based on, 
questions it asks, problems it's concerned with, stuff like that. Purple is the heart of the paper. It represents main new results, findings and conclusions. Red is for methodology, what experimental or theoretical techniques the authors used. And finally, yellow is for interesting examples, facts that are not really significant for the paper, but what I personally resonate with, and I think it's quite interesting and cool. Kinda like dessert knowledge. As far as the reading goes, that's pretty much it. Depending on the paper and what I intend to do with it, I often go into the post-processing stage. For example, draw a mind map, transfer important ideas into my second brain, or create flashcards to commit certain facts to memory. Initially, I thought to include it in this video, but then I thought it would make it too long and kind of mixed, because reading the paper and processing what you have read are actually two different beasts. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, let me know down in the comment section below. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button, share it with your friends, and consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Goodbye, and thanks for the interesting knowledge.